protect your DNA. BioPQQ can promote formation of new mitochondria. InfoWarsStore.com I'm not gonna sit here and take it anymore. The Omnibudsman of Liberty. Uh, Dr. No, the guy that never compromised with tyranny. We appreciate you coming on with us. Thank you. Good to be with you, Alex. I could ask a lot of questions, but just out of the gates, what do you think of this election? <laughs> I think it's chaos. I think it's a reflection of where we are economically speaking, where we are monetarily speaking, where we are on our foreign policy. Totally chaotic. The people are angry and upset, but I don't think they've quite figured out exactly where the problem is. They don't think in philosophic terms. They think in political terms. The problem is not political. The political chicanery that goes on is a reflection of bad uh, philosophy. Whether it comes to economic policies, this whole idea of Keynesian economics, it's a failure just as socialism has failed. Our system has failed and people don't quite see it that way. A inflationism has failed. The central banking ideas have failed and the foreign intervention has failed. And yet they still think of details of, well, maybe we need a better manager. Maybe we ought to do it this way, that way. We shouldn't go into this country. We should go into this other country. We shouldn't spend so much money here. No, they miss the whole point that uh, what we need is an understanding of what true liberty is all about and why that's an individual matter. It's not collective. And quite frankly, I spend my time talking to young people because I think that's what we need. We need an educated new generation that will be more uh, intense on relying on liberty rather than relying on the political process where they're trying to get one advantage over another. Do you have any predictions for this election that we're now in? Well, my prediction is that not a whole lot is going to change. I think the momentum is so great. There's a lot of good intentions out there. But I think that the spending is going to continue. Uh, I think the printing of money is going to continue. Uh, the deficits are going to continue. I've become cynical over the many decades I've been involved. Uh, I mean, even if you go back to the Ronald Reagan era, I was so excited about that. I was a spa supporter of his in 1976. And yet, uh, when, when uh, he was in, the debt went up, the spending went up. And, uh, you know, when, the, high, when uh, the Congress finally was controlled by Republicans uh, and the Senate and the presidency, guess what? We spent more money than the Democrats. That's so right. I'm rather cynical about the whole thing. The momentum is great. And as much as we look toward, and I certainly do look toward the positive side of the people waking up, there's a lot of people out there that want government. And I think the, the, the result of this election will be that probably 97% of the members of Congress are going to be reelected. You know, it's going to be pretty much the status quo. And uh, I, I think we have more work to do in the intellectual sphere, the understanding of economic policy, the understanding of the nature of money, and uh, then that will eventually be reflected in our members of Congress. You, you mentioned in the introduction that I've done some work on the Federal Reserve, but I, I, I worked hard in the Congress, I, and especially when I interviewed the chairman of the Federal Reserve Boards on various occasions, but my, my uh, uh, approach was to reach to people outside of Washington. I know you're a purist. That's, that's why I respect you. And, and, and you've always stuck by your guns, and that's the way to do it. But expanding on that, I mean, you've got the best voting record probably anybody, you know, since, since, since Thomas Jefferson. But if we expand on that, the, the incredible awakening, people know about the TPP, they know about globalism, they know about vote rigging, they know about the Federal Reserve. What is it like to watch Trump? And I know he's not perfect, bad on tortures, iPhones, you know, surveillance. He doesn't get a lot of internet stuff. I mean, he admits he's, he's kind of a troglodyte when it comes to technology. But what is it like to see the movement that Barry Goldwater and the Liberty Movement and you grew, the American people grew? Undoubtedly, Trump is a, a, a libertarian-style insurrection into the Republican Party. They see it as outside. They're trying to reject it. The libertarians have been taken over by the Democrats and Republicans. They've got... Johnson and the other guy, uh, well, inter basically endorsing Hillary, that's outrageous. So all I'm saying is not an approval of, I'm not trying to get an endorsement of Trump. I'm saying, what is it like for you to see the liberty movement basically in the hands of Trump with Breitbart and others, and I think Breitbart are good folks, intending to fight on even if this election stolen? All I'm saying is coexisting as original patriots uh, you know, like yourself, uh, how do you see that coexisting with what's happened with Trump? Well, you, you admit that he's not perfect, and I'm in the business of trying to present the case for liberty 
and not water it down. And those who are more involved in politics back and forth, and they say, well, a little watering down, a little acceptance, a little bit of hope, a little bit of prayer. Uh, you know, I don't have no, any gripes with that, uh, but I think you, you have to be realistic that where are we today under those circumstances, and if you water it down a little bit, you know, I used to say when I was campaigning that, you know, if, uh, if you talk about food stamps for the rich or the poor, and you say, well, there's people in need, so we have to help them out. But there's only 3% of the people who need help. So let's, uh, let's say, let's give help to the 3% of the people. You give up 100% of the principles that you're dealing with. So that's why if you water it down a little bit, and I understand it, and if you're a political activist and you love this party stuff, and you have high hopes, eh, get people involved. But the only benefit comes from people changing their minds and their understanding that people's attitudes have to be so sound that they reflect on the members of Congress. I don't think the people in Congress, you know, in hopes that they will change their position a little bit, that all of a sudden the people are going to wake up. Right now, there's too many people. Uh, you know, I had a lot of young people came, that came out during my campaign. But, you know, it was, uh, I was more discouraged by the fact that Bernie Sanders got bigger crowds and he says, I'm a socialist. So I knew, boy, my work is cut out for myself. You know, there's this. So I'm dealing in that area of changing people's minds. Because quite frankly, I think that uh, if we have an intellectual discussion between what uh, free market is and socialism, that we can win this. I also work under the impression that uh, getting 51% to vote one way or the other isn't the important thing you need. 8% of the people who are the thought leaders in the country, the people who write the books and write the magazine, and people like you that have an access, uh, you know, to, to the public, they're the ones who have to understand it. So I, I'm too discouraged about, you know, uh, nitpicking and changing a thing here, this policy here, this, except this, this isn't good, a little protectionism doesn't hurt anything. No, I got it. we've got to okay. change the whole system. I, I, we got to change the whole fraudulent system. Yes. Ron Paul is our guest. we got to change the minds, minds of the people. That's what's happened. And uh, you can only do that one person at a time. Ron Paul, LibertyReport.com. You've got so many great sites, TV shows, radio shows. I hear it all over the radio. I mean, it's wonderful to almost see you freer now that you're not in Congress than you were before to really educate. Yes, and I, and I feel good about it uh, that, uh, you know, there's still an audience. Uh, you know, most people, when they leave Congress, uh, you know, the Alex Jones of the world, they don't call you up anymore. But uh, still, there are people that are interested, and I am pleased, and I have to admit it, that if they're interested in what I'm saying, you know, the, mo the most flattering thing that I had in Washington was I, I went my own way. I didn't try to I think that I could fight with them and change their minds or give great speeches, but I would vote if it, were by, if it happened to be by myself. I would do it in a quiet, steady way. But every once in a while, a member of Congress would come up and sit down beside me because I'd all be by myself voting, and he would say, why do you do that? Which was a sincere question. So one person at a time like that, and a few of them change their ways, and they become much more interested in... Well, no, that's the point. You did something with no market. support. You did something with no support in Congress and really changed the paradigm to a great extent to at least have a national debate. And that's why, you know, I model myself just, just, just historically off seeing what you and others have done with the wind blowing in your face over time, you end up turning the tables. And, and getting back to Trump, because it's obviously the big phenomenon in the election right now, the, the biggest reason I've supported him is so that I could also sit there and point out things that were wrong. And I've seen Trump actually change when he sees something is wrong, if it's actually genuine and not from the establishment. But obviously, uh, looking at Trump, because obviously people want to know what Ron Paul thinks about this, the entire establishment, the communist Chinese, the, the socialist pope, uh, the Mexican presidents, all the big corrupt combines, the Republican Party machinery that, that has attacked you and tried to destroy you. I mean, you know a man by his enemies, and Dr. Paul... Trump has the same enemies you had, the same enemies I have, and they are so opposed to him. I think that's undoubtable. So what do you think of that, and what do you think that signifies? Well, I, I think what you're doing is fine and dandy, and you make those points, and you can make inroads, but my approach has been been different. I take it out of the personalities. I never wanted, when I, I bet you can't find anything I've ever said on the House floor about, oh, you know, the President of the United States is a bum. Or are saying the Democrats are, you know, the fall, and it's all the fall of the Democrats. 
No, I'm always going to be talking about changing people's minds about why printing money is lousy, uh, why fighting wars overseas is bad, and not. Uh, and, no, I got it. You are a gentleman who is who is reaching out to people trying to change them, and Trump is more of a bull in a china cabinet. Yeah, I think that's the case, and there hopefully that uh, there's room for both both ways of changing things. Because, uh, you know, I sort of enjoy the idea, though I never became a Trump supporter, I enjoyed the idea that right now we're winning on some of these issues. One is that it's a little bit more popular to challenge political correctness than it was a few years ago. And I think the American people are waking up. They're so sick and tired of that. Bingo, bingo. That's what I'm bad, saying, Dr. Paul, <laughs> it, it, is that Trump has taken what you built and others built and we built and magnified it. There's some imperfections there, but but I think I, I just heard you right. You said I'm kind of a Trump supporter on the fact that he's made it okay to have free speech and stand up against the bullying of the PC crowd. Okay. Well, no, I'm I'm glad that has happened, but I see it in a in a different in a different sense because I use it in a different fashion. I would say, well, who uses which bathroom is a private property issue. We need to deal with the issue of privacy. Why do governments own these things? Why in the world would we be talking about this? Because people can't walk into our houses and decide who's going to use Yeah, why is bathroom. the government involved? So, on businesses should have whatever they want. You want to have the same sex? So you want, want to have them, them separate? I want them, I want them to use the total principle of freedom, property rights, voluntary contracts, non-aggression principle, I want to always emphasize the philosophic uh, underpinnings of what we're talking about. And you're dealing, you know, with sure. one of the specifics, and uh, you will go a certain way politically. But I've lost any enthusiasm for thinking that, you know, if we get a few more people in Congress, next year we're going to have a balanced budget. No, that, that's not going to happen. I never really believed it. Never went there with the intention. Went there as a surprise because I didn't think anybody would vote for me if I took this position. Uh, of, of, you know, saying that government says should be very, very small. What is your gut on this election? I mean, he's ahead in battleground states. They keep oversampling Democrats 10, 15, 20 points. They've been caught in WikiLeaks, fixing polls, getting questions beforehand, rigging things. We know a lot of hanky-panky happened to you when you'd be winning in New Hampshire and places. Uh, I mean, what's your gut about the election tell you? Well, I haven't relied on my gut too much. <laughs> uh, sure, what's but, the analysis? I, I, I look at the financial markets, and unfortunately, the financial markets this last couple of days went against uh, against Trump. Because, uh, you know, the way they were responding, they thought, oh, Hillary won something, Hillary won something. So therefore, what is so sad is that because it was interpreted Hillary won something with the uh, director of the FBI coming out, that the markets, which are supposed to be free markets and capitalism, they responded with glee. The stock market skyrocketed nearly 400 points. That, to me, is sad, sad, a sad state of affairs. Well, that shows the control, but, 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 but uh, now there's some jitters. Now there's some jitters is my point. So you're thinking a oh, Hillary yeah. win. Well, right now, I'm saying the markets think that. Uh, uh, I, I think that uh, right now, I'm, I'm not predicting. I'm not betting any money. I'm also, I did a program today on my program that said the momentum. I just try to describe where the momentum is uh, after this election is over, and I didn't pick a winner, that we are still going to spend more money. We're going to get bigger government. Taxes will not go down. The troops won't. Be no, no, no. I agree, but the and, awakening and momentum. Sort of but the awakening momentum has never been bigger. So let me ask you this in closing, then, Dr. Ron Paul's our guest. Looking at this, I mean, just looking at Hillary, she's so bad. She's so evil. She wants war with Russia. I mean, just for world peace, isn't it positive that Trump doesn't want war with Russia and doesn't want to back radical Islam? Yeah, but I don't want to get into a debate on this. I would concede that, but then I could throw out something else where he might be more likely to cause trouble. But I don't want to get into that. That's back into the personality and bickering between, you know, political factions, and I think elections are phony. I, I think you, you, you might not agree with this one, but just think, you know the establishment, the deep state. They've controlled these elections. We control them overseas. They control them here, too. <laughs>
It's being announced. The way you keep the internet open and free is you get involved more than ever. Go to InfoWars.com forward slash app. A new battleship in the fight. InfoWars Live, available right now. We're looking for a crew to man it. You gonna sit down and play games and be a trendy? Or are you gonna be part of history? Don't sit by and let the internet and free speech be stolen from you. Take action. Yeah.